Let's talk about fixed wireless 5G home internet and how it compares to other internet options like cable, satellite, DSL, or hotspot, other options that you have out there. I've been using either 4G or 5G cellular based home internet for several years now. And that's with both T-Mobile and Verizon. My parents actually have AT&T home internet and I've, I've used that as well as you know cable, satellite, and in this house I had DSL. Uh, before as well so I will go through all these details of what the pros are what the cons are I'll talk about cost that's out there contracts what hardware they use issues with them why I might be taking these things apart why I might be adding devices to them and we'll go through about big pros and cons so there are some really big pros to these actually that you'll be surprised to hear about and those some big cons to them as well that might make you say I am never going to go to one of those ISPs out there so I'll touch on all those and I'll go into more and more details about like how good the hardware is, what are some of the advanced features you can do as far as like port forwarding or latency and other issues, all kinds of things that you might be interested in. I'll cover that closer toward the end because I know a lot of people want to know just the high level basics of what's different about it, why should I care, and should I go to these options. So before I get too far though, I must say I am Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel and I cover lots of things on my channel, not just home internet. But that is probably my most popular thing, so I thank you for tuning in and watching. And if you enjoy the video, obviously give me the thumbs up, like button, and then think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. So let's get into the details here with coverage. So the first step is you might not have an option of cable or, or um, fiber internet, and that maybe is why you're here watching today is you want to see are these any good. Or you might already have cable internet and you're tired of of them bending you over with price hikes year after year. And so that is another thing I will cover here of, is it worth it to switch? So for these, T-Mobile has the most coverage out there for their home internet, especially because they just came out with a new plan that allows anywhere that has the T-Mobile signal, you can now get their home internet plan, but it's a home internet light. And the big difference there is the data allowance. It is not unlimited data. Pretty much every other um, cellular home internet plan, not a hotspot plan, but a home internet plan, are unlimited data. But the T-Mobile Lite plan is uh, limited. It starts at 100 gigabytes, and I think you can go up to 300 gigabytes per month. It's basically $50 a month per 100 gigabytes of data. But that is available anywhere. Verizon does not have that. It is definitely more select. With where you can get it they do offer both a 4g lte and a 5g plan and their plan is 50 dollars a month um, for like a two-year um, price guarantee it's not a contract it guarantees that price for two years or you can pay 70 dollars a month you get some extra features um, thrown in like uh, that google um, nest hub and stuff i like got for free with the more expensive plan and it's a three-year price guarantee but both of these you can get uh, 25 dollars off i think by going and having one of their 5G unlimited phone plans. So if you have some of their unlimited data phone plans, you can get it down to 25 bucks a month. That's with an auto pay discount and other things, but it's it is definitely doable to get it for 25 bucks a month. The T-Mobile, if you jump through their hoops and you have Magenta Max phone plans, you can get it down to 30 bucks a month. And T-Mobile guarantees or says that it will not uh, change in price if you don't change the plan so that will stay indefinitely at the 50 or 30 dollars a month uh, whatever you get it at with their stipulation so that's what's probably the most attractive to it is people see 25 bucks and 30 bucks a month for unlimited data home internet and that is certainly a big draw point they're trying to get customers and they are loading up customers they're having trouble keeping up with the demand there but let's talk about some of the downsides so again you can't get these in all places and they're also being a little bit sneaky with how they're doing it. So you do need to check really closely. In fact, right now, if I go and check at my address, I can't get either of these. And the reason I can't get the T-Mobile ones is because I already have T-Mobile at this address and they limit how many people in an area can get their service because they know home users are a big data hog and they don't want too many uh, users at a single tower to slow it down for everyone else. So check your neighbor addresses, check your friends and families and see if they have it around you. It really has nothing to do with the coverage. So just because you get 5G ultra wideband Verizon does not mean you can get their service. So um, that's something you have to go to their websites and check to see if you can even get the coverage to start with. 
The other thing I want to talk about is 5G is not the same as Wi-Fi 5 gigahertz. That's a common misconception. So um, don't think that just because, like, let's say you have 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi devices that say they don't work on 5 gigahertz, that does not mean they will not work with these. 5G for cellular means fifth generation, and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi is talking about the frequency band that Wi-Fi is. So they're completely separate. I fully understand how it's confusing, but um, just know that the 5G cellular service will work with any of your existing Wi-Fi devices out there. Next up, let's assume that you have coverage and you can get one of these services out there. Let's talk about what kind of speeds they offer. So T-Mobile, the speed is the same regardless of it, if it's the 5G home plan or the 5G light plan. There is a difference for the data limitation. So for that, the speed is going to vary drastically. And this is what maybe people have a lot of problem with is I can't tell you how fast your T-Mobile home internet speed will be or your Verizon for that matter until you get it and test it out at your house. So you can go on to their website, you can see what their coverage map says as far as what type of 5G or 4G signal you get, but you're not gonna really know until you get it and plug it in. And typically I would say for the T-Mobile 5G, if you're in their 5G extended area, you're probably going to get around 100 megabits per second for download and upload will vary greatly, maybe 20 megabits per second, maybe 50. Um, it could be higher than that even in, in some areas. And then if you're on their ultra capacity, which is their, their fastest 5G out there, you can see hundreds of megabits per second, like five, six, seven, eight hundred uh, megabits per second of download speed. And you can see a hundred megabits per second of upload. So that is certainly possible, but there's also a lot of people that get 20 megabits per second download and like five up and that's all they can get. And it's all based off your specific location. I've done videos on external antennas that can help with that, but that's a big unknown is what speed you'll get. Verizon now is a little bit more consistent. It's a little bit better and it's because they severely limit who can get their service. So they're only going in areas they really know they have capacity to support it. So from what I've seen, Verizon is, if you have their 5G C-band, which is really their bread and butter for their home internet, you're going to get around 300 megabits per second down and 20 megabits per second upload. Pretty consistent day in and day out. Um, but the other thing here that I'll note is for both of these, you are lower tier on priority level. So if the network gets congested, they're going to start to slow you down. They're not throttled. It, it uh, might seem like it's throttled, but uh, their 5G plans are not throttled, but they're deprioritized. So that means that, you know, middle of the day, middle of the night, I might get blazing speeds. And then come evening time when everyone's at home and they're doing homework or they're streaming movies and TV or gaming, then your service might slow down. And for some people, it slows to a, a crawl where it literally is not usable. I hear that mainly on the T-Mobile service. I have not heard that on Verizon, nor do I experience that with Verizon. I am very consistent with speed. T-Mobile, I do see more variation in the speed based off busy time. So that's something to note there. We talked about cost. We talked about no contract with them. So that's another big thing. The other thing out there is latency or ping. So this is basically a how long it takes for when you uh, send data from your home out to somewhere on the internet and how long it takes to get there and, and come back. So that round trip uh, duration is part of um, latency and that affects your user experience for a lot of things. Not only like web browsing for like when you hit click, it takes a second for it to load. That is latency, but also things like video calling. If you are lagging behind, you know, if you're always cutting off someone else, that might be because you have poor latency performance. And then things like gaming, people are very aware, gamers are very aware of ping and latency because it means you, it really stinks to play the games because you're always lagging behind. So that is something that you're going to be worse on in most cases for cellular versus any hard line. So versus DSL, versus fiber, versus uh, cable, they're going to be better in latency. There's only a couple times when I've seen that not true. And the main time I see that not true is when you're on millimeter wave 5G that Verizon offers. And that's not this cube box, it's actually a window mount box. 
That one I've seen um, very good performance, like seven milliseconds type performance for ping. But these other ones, I regularly see 30 to 40 milliseconds unloaded. And this is where it really hurts is the loaded ping is always significantly worse. I mean, somewhere around 100 milliseconds, maybe 150. There's been times I've seen seconds, like one or two seconds. So that's 1,000 to 2,000 milliseconds of loaded ping on T-Mobile. So that one is a big drawback. So next I wanna talk about the availability of these to actually move with you. So T-Mobile has openly said in the past that you can actually move your device uh, away from your home, let's say you go camping, let's say you go to a hotel, and you can use it. So they do allow that, and neither of these is are geo-locked. Verizon Terms of Services says that if you move the device away from your home, you have to contact them in advance, and they, of course, can say, no, um, we're not going to do that. That said, I have moved all of these devices away from home, and I plug them in, and they work just fine. So you can take that however you want. Uh, they do work. It is against the terms of service in, in, in some ways for these. T-Mobile has said they kind of allow it. So it's kind of a gray area. Lots of people take them. Truckers take them out there on the road and use them. Um, and you can plug them into your car or whatnot and, and have it work. All right. So let's talk about some more of the advanced things with cellular. And that is cellular-based internet uses CG NAT, especially T-Mobile. They have a very aggressive CG NAT, and you don't get a public IP address that is um, you know, dedicated to you, nor do you get the ability to do port forwarding through their network. Their gateways are very, very limited with their features, and so if you want to go in there and do port forwarding, you can't directly on there. You're going to have to have some pretty extensive workarounds. You're going to need to sign up for either like a reverse proxy server, which I've covered, you're going to have to do a VPN and you know, pay for a dedicated IP or you're going to have to you know, set up a DDNS to help keep track of your, um, of your public IP. With Verizon, they're better. They seem to be more stable with their public IP that you, you can get and does work. And their device allows port forwarding as well as things like DMZ and IP pass through. So you can send it to your own personal router and, you know, be able to manage all that stuff. They do allow you to manage it on there directly as well. You can check out my other videos for both of these for those kind of specific details. But the CG NAT is a big issue and the workarounds can have their own drawbacks. One, they have cost. The other one is that it can add latency uh, to your connection. And then the last one about that CG NAT and the way that uh, cellular networks work is you basically connect to their tower, you get on their network and then you get routed through their network however they see best fit and then you come out of their network to quote unquote the internet and that might be in a town nearby or i've had it be in you know several states away so i'm in michigan i've had t-mobile pop up and i'm in denver colorado when i go to a website and that creates all kinds of problems with a lot of things things like my banking websites did not like that because they say hey you know, you're never in Denver, Colorado logging in. And so it sets up flags. And I have to do extra, you know, authentication. They want to send me text messages or, you know, uh, two-factor authentication methods out there. And then things like uh, streaming services. If you're using things like Hulu or other services that use your location to determine what channels or content you get, this might throw it for a loop. So again, there are workarounds. You can do like a VPN and pick a server in a location that you want it to be in and that can solve it but again you have no control over their network and so you're at the mercy of them for that so that's something out there to consider so I talked about port forwarding as well and the other thing I'll talk about is the actual hardware that they send you the beauty of both of these plans from Verizon and T-Mobile is you do not have to pay for their hardware either up front nor do you have to rent it but if you lose it or you don't give it back you do have to uh, pay them for it, and it's, it's like three, $400 in price. So it's not cheap, but um, they do give them to you for free, and if they break, um, you know, it is T-Mobile or Verizon device, and they'll replace it or repair it for you. So that is nice, but T-Mobile's ones, I would say, are my least favorite because 
there's <laughs> there's a group of people online that have to make these add-on. This is a fan, a cooling fan, and this is used to keep it cool because these are known to overheat, especially if you put them in a window in direct sunlight. So that's an add-on that uh, I have bought, and that's the same thing with this Arcadian Gateway. There's another fan um, unit down here, as well as having connections for external antennas. I've taken these apart, put external antennas on them. I have videos of that as well. Now, this Verizon one I've taken apart, not for cooling, because the Verizon one actually comes with a built-in cooling fan from the factory. And overall, I like their uh, hardware much, much better, not only from the hardware standpoint, but also the software or the firmware that they have built into it. They give you a lot more control over the features, uh, turning off the Wi-Fi, doing the port forwarding. Um, not quite a full bridge mode available, but uh, very close to it. Definitely something that's workable where when I plug it up to my Asus AI Mesh setup, all my port forwarding that's set up on my Asus automatically uh, works once I do the DMZ uh, directly to that Asus device. So that is a big pro of Verizon versus T-Mobile. So if you were to ask me what would I do, um, especially if I had both of these as an option, I would pick Verizon over T-Mobile. But that said, there is going to be a lot of variation based off where you live. And if you're lucky enough to have the availability of both of them, I would say get both of them and test them out and see what works the best for you. Um, do know the other downside, I would say, to the fixed wireless is the network seems to be right now they're doing a lot of upgrades and so it seems to be less consistent and reliable especially on t-mobile even verizon i've seen a little bit of it but there's days or weeks that it might slow down for example my uncle was um, just complaining that his t-mobile was slowing down uh, to a crawl almost unusable and it had been uh, quite fast uh, before um, 75 100 megabits per second and it was super slow i actually went there this past weekend I showed up and we we tested it and he was getting like 600 plus megabits per second download and I forget what the upload was 40 or something um, megabits per second but blazing fast and you know he noted before when he was having the problems he wasn't getting a 5G signal and now we confirmed that he's on a 5G ultra capacity so their best signal and what happened almost guarantee is either the tower went down uh, and got repaired or what I think most likely happened was it got upgraded. And when once they upgraded it, it was great. But he didn't have internet you know, from them for basically a week or more. And that is because of them taking it down. Now, in my experience, at least with AT&T DSL, I almost never had an outage. And I had very consistent performance with Comcast um, cable as well. So... Uh, I know other people have lots of problems. You maybe their their cable goes out all the time, but I think uh, especially fiber and cable are probably more consistent and reliable. The only asterisk to that is in bad weather, if you do get um, some kind of power lines and cables that drop down, your fixed wireless might actually remain up without a problem. So a little bit of give and take there on reliability, but that is kind of my overall take of it. If I had cable, or fiber today and I was purely looking at changing because I was going to get a call savings I would encourage you to instead call your cable or your uh, fiber company and negotiate with them tell them that you're canceling tell them why and tell them it's because one of these two competitors is out there and they're gonna offer you unlimited data and these fast speeds for 50 bucks a month or 25 or 30 bucks a month and negotiate that price down the problem is, as you know, you probably have to fight that year after year as they do price hikes. But I would encourage people that have cable or fiber that's good service to not switch off of it because you're going to gain some headache as well as the cost savings. So it's kind of up to you to decide if that is worth it or not. But I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was helpful. Obviously, I can't cover everything. You know, I try to go through, I try to write it down and cover all the, the highlights. But... If you have questions, put them in the comments below. I do read the comments, and I do try to answer them. So uh, put it down there. Let me know what you think. And uh, feel free to share your own experiences with any of these services as well. So thanks, and take care.